Welcome back aliens, my name is Navin Reddy and let's continue with the series of Python. And in this video we'll talk about one of my favorite topic which is called as data types. Now why it's so important because we have worked with variables right and everything was working. Now when you work on a project it's very important to understand what type of data you're working with so that you can process that data in that format. Because if you don't process the data in that particular format you might face errors or maybe bugs and trust me bugs are horrifying. So what are the data types we have here? So let me just list those things here. The first one is none, second one is numeric, the third one we have is list, tuple, set, string, range and map or you can call it as dictionary. Now let's start with the first one. The first one is none. Know what it means? Now when you have a variable and if that variable is not assigned with any value, it is, it is none. Normally in other languages we use a keyword as null but in Python we use none. The second one is numeric type. Now if we talk about numeric, we have multiple types here. In fact, we can go with four. The first one is int. Then we have float, then we have complex, and we have bool. So when you talk about numeric, it works numbers, right? Example, when I say uh, num is equal to 2.5, now this is float, okay? So float value. Now, how do we know that this is float? In fact, in the last session, we have done that, right? So we can use a type as a function, and in this, you can pass num, and you can say it says class float. Again, we'll talk about class later, okay, what class means, but time being, it's a float. Okay, so now I will say another number, I will say num is equal to five. Of course, we can change the type of variable, right? So now if I assign five, if I say num, and you can see the class now changed to int. That means the type of this num is int. Uh, we also have complex right now what complex means so if i will say num is equal to now if you remember mathematics we have we used to have this concept of complex numbers right now how do we represent complex numbers so we used to say a plus b j or oh, in fact it was i in complex number but here we have to use j now we can replace the value of a with a number i will say six plus maybe nine j normally this j is represented by a square root of minus one okay now so when i say enter you can see it is it is accepting the value and if i see the type of this num it's your complex type so complex basically means you have a number plus a or plus or minus a imaginary number okay now this works so we have int we have float and we have complex so can i convert from a different type example i have a value which is float and i want to convert that into integer is it possible let's try it so what i will do here is i will take a variable called as a and the value in a i will assign as 5.6 i have another variable which is b and i want to assign the int value of a can i convert it because if i see the type of a it's float right i want to i want to get the type of b as int and i want I only i want to have the value which is 5. So in that case, you will be using a int function in which you will pass a. So this int function will convert your float value or any value into integer format. And that works. Now if I say the type of b, it's int and the value of b is 5, right? So we can convert that. Can I convert a int value into float? Yes, we can. So let's say we have another variable which is k and I want to fetch the value of b but not in the int format, I want to, I want in float format. Yes, we can do that. So I can say float and in this bracket you can pass it and you will get, so if I say k, you can see we got 5.0 and of course the type of it is float. You can, you can check it out later. Can I convert a normal number into complex number? Example, I have a variable and I have b variable. So let me change the value for k and I will assign the k to 6. Okay, so we got b as 5 and k as 6. Now I want to get a complex number. So I will say c is equal to Oh, how do we get a complex number? It's very simple. Just use a complex function that the way we are doing. And then you can pass two variables here or one, only one parameter that when that works. If I want to pass two parameters, I can pass b comma k. And if I say c, you can see the value now. So it says five plus six j because five is your b and uh, six is your k. Okay, so it works. So we can convert the value from, you know, from here to there. In fact, we, we, can, we can work with string as well, but we'll see that later. Now we also have a type called as bool, which is also called as boolean. Now how can we use a boolean, boolean value here? Now when it comes to boolean, it simply means true and false. Now think about this computer world, right? Or in this world, we always take decisions and decisions are based on true or false. You know, we, in your mind, we always work with these conditions. Example, uh, let's say if you have two choices, you will select those choice which is more favorable or which will be more profitable, right? So we, we apply conditions there. 
So if that is more profitable, it will go there. If this is more profit, profitable, it will, it will go here. Now the same way, we apply a condition and we get true or false. So that true or false comes under Boolean type. Now we have B and K, right? So if I want to check if B is less than K, we can do that. So less than symbol is less than. And if I say enter, you can see we got true. So true here is a Boolean type, right? And you can assign that to a variable as well. So I will say variable type as bool is equal to B less than K. Now you can see in this bool, if I type bool, you can say it is true. And if I say the type of bool, it's bool itself because it's a type name as well, right? So I should, be, I should have used a different name here, right? So that's Boolean for you. In fact, we have true and we have false as well. Uh, example, if I say B is greater than K, and that's not the case, right? B is five, K is six, so it should give you false. So we have true and we have false. Again, there are different operators which we can use less than, greater than. Uh, so we have different operators which we'll discuss in the upcoming videos. But here, we can use true or false. But then why I'm keeping uh, true and false in, in numeric? It should be different, right? The thing is, in Python, what we do is we, we use true as one and false as zero. Example, let's say if I, want to if I want to convert true into a number, you can see I'm converting that into in format and you can see we got one. The same thing if I do for false, you can see we got zero. So true is one and false is zero. So that's your integer format, you know, that's your numeric type. So we have talked about none, we have talked about numeric. The next type we have is, in fact, we have discussed those names, right? Those things comes under sequence. So when you say list, uh, range, set, tuple, those things comes under sequence. Now we have worked with list before, right? So how do we define list? It's very simple. You will say LST equal to, uh, you can define a list here. So I can say 25 comma 36 comma 45 comma 12. Any number, any number, any format doesn't matter. You can take string as well. So you can, this is how you work with list. And how do we know the type of it? So you will say type of LST and you can see it says it is of type list. The same thing can be done with set. So if I get a set here, I will say s equal to and you, uh, you will use a curly brackets there and inside that you can specify values. So I specify these values and you can see if I say enter and if I say s you, you got the values there and you can see it is not repeating and if I define the type of this s it is set right so even this works. Now the another type we have is tuple which we have worked with again so I will say t is equal to so we have to use a down bracket here I will say 25, 26 the, you can use any format doesn't matter right uh, you can see we got t and if I say type of t here is stupid. Okay, now we also have a string type, right? So how do we define a string type? It's very simple. You say str is equal to, and you can specify a name here using double quotes or single quotes, both works. I can say my name, uh, that, that's Navin, and using using str, you can perform certain operations. Again, we have done that in detail in the in earlier videos, right? Uh, so if you want to know more about list and tuple, we, you can go back to the previous videos and you can watch it. In this video, just, we are just talking about the data, data types available. How about character? Because we have not talked about character, right? And if you are coming from some other languages like Java, C, C++, we do have a char type there. Now, in Python, we don't have a char type. What we have is, if you are creating a string, let's say I will say this is st is equal to, and if you have a single digit or single character, that's a char type for you. But actually it is string because even if you say type and if you specify st, you can see it, is, it says class str, which is string in this case. So we have string, we don't have char as to be specific, but we can use char as a part of string. Now we have another fancy stuff which is, which is there in Python, but not in other languages called as range. Example, you know, when you iterate or what is iteration means, uh, going from one value to the, uh, the end value, example from one to 10 or 10 to 100, or maybe from one to thousand. So when we iterate between values, uh, we can use range. How do we define range? It's very simple, you say range, and you give a curly package and specify the range. Example, I want, to, I want to go till 10. So we got a range from zero and we have 10 values, which is zero to nine. Or how do we know which, what values we have? So what we can do is we can actually convert the range into a list so that we can print it, right? So what I will do is I will say list of range and we'll say 10. In fact, there's another way of doing this. We can also use a for loop, but unfortunately we have not done that yet. So we'll not be focusing on for loop here because we have a better way of printing it. But as of now, just to get the output of the range, I'm converting a range into a list so that you can see the output. And you can see this is a list of, this is the range. 
So if I want to get a list of let's say 10 values from 0 to 9, we will use a range there. Okay, you might be saying, what if I want to have a range with different iterations, maybe a different difference. Uh, example, I want to print all, all, all even numbers from one, from 1 to 10. In that case, you can do that. You can say, I want to have, I want to start with, or maybe you can start with 2 and then you the ending part is 10 and the, the difference would be 2 because you want uh, even numbers right so you can do that but you have to put that in a range so range does take three parameters as well and you can see we got 2 4 6 and 8 so I should, I should have went till 11 right because that's the ending part okay so this is how you can use a range in fact you can just type here and you can say range of course right it will give you range as you, you can it will give you range type so that's one type you can use and all these things comes under sequence right because we are getting a sequence of values and now we have one of the most exciting type which is called as mapping or you can say dictionary now what is dictionary normally what happens you know when you have huge amount of data and even when you want to fetch data in an efficient way or in a fast way you what you can do is with every value you can assign a key normally in list what we do is for a value we assign a index number right but in dictionary for every value we'll assign a key example uh, let's say i want to have all the mobile phones names example so let's say in my friend group if i have let's say 50 phones uh, everyone will imagine everyone has a different phone here so we can of course we can do an uh, index number right so index number zero iphone 6s index number one samsung maybe samsung j8 uh, index number three one plus three uh, index number four let's say mi5 so we want to have all these numbers now instead of having index numbers we can use a key which is your name example who has one plus three let's say kiran who has uh, iphone sixes let's say rahul who has samsung let's say navin so in this case every mobile phone has a name or a key attached to it so it will be easier for you to fetch right Okay, now it's not just about string, okay? You can also use numbers, you can also use, example, roll numbers. Uh, example, when you go for giving your CET exams or entrance exams, you get a number, right? That's your key. So you can identify each object with a key. How do I do that here? Oh, there's one thing to remember. Key should be unique. So if you have a dictionary, all the keys has to be unique. And values, you can repeat values. Let's try it out. How do we define a dictionary? It's very simple. Let's say D is equal to, you have to use a curly brackets. Now why curly brackets? Because keys should not repeat and what doesn't repeat? Set and set uses curly brackets, right? So it makes more sense here. So I will use a key as let's say Naveen and then I will use a value. Let's say Naveen has a phone which is Samsung. We can give another value by giving a comma and here I will say who, who has this value? Let's say Rahul. Rahul is using let's say iPhone and then we have one more let's say Kiran and Kiran is using OnePlus. Okay, now this is, oh, I made a mistake there. Okay, so so I just missed a, a, a colon here, right? So that, that was my bad. If I try to print D, you can see we got the key and a value pair. So in this case, Naveen, Rahul, and Kiran, those are keys. How do I know those are keys? You can say D dot, you can print the keys, and you can see we got these keys. You, you got Naveen, Rahul, and Kiran, those are keys. And if you want to get the values, I guess we have a method with values. Yes, yeah, so we have do we do have a method which is values, and if I say enter, you can see Samsung, iPhone, and OnePlus; those are values. Now, how do I get a particular value? Let's say I want to get uh, iPhone here. In this case, I have to use a key, right? Which is Rahul in this case. So I will say D uh, square bracket. If in list we use index numbers, right? We don't have index numbers here. We have a key. So we'll use Rahul as a key, and if I enter, you can see we got iPhone. So that's dictionary. In fact, we have one more way of fetching value. Instead of using a square bracket, we can also use functions like get. In this get, you can mention, hey, I want to fetch, let's say, Kiran's phone, which is OnePlus, right? So you can use a square bracket, you can use a get method, everything works. That's how you work with data types. So we have different data types. Let me just list those things once again. So we have a uh, none, we have numeric types, we have sequence. In sequence, we have list, range, uh, set, tuple, and then we have mapping in which we have dictionary. So I hope it makes sense. Uh, so in, in, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and do click the like button if you're enjoying this session. So let